Hi all, welcome to Code with Pran. So in the today's tutorial, in the today's video, we are going to see about the usage of GATE, how to use GATE, and also the real time use of GATE. So before using, uh, like uh, before, like if you wanted to try using GATE in your local, so the first thing which you have to do is like you have to install uh, the GATE to your local. So like here is the URL for downloading the GATE. You can just download from GATE-SEM. Dot com slash download so you can download for either windows uh mac os if you want to follow next you have you can just download the gate so once you download the gate you'll be able to see the git uh bash terminal so it's not necessary that you have to use the git commands from only the git bash terminal even you can use from the normal terminal which is for windows or like you'll be able to see for normal command from for linux so like what is the real usage of Git? i, I just wanted to give you a real-time example so i think everyone will be familiar with the google cloud photos so like mostly was what we used to do. So uh, because of the storage problem, like most of the people we used to do that, we just uh, like back up the photos to the Google Cloud. So Google has given a free storage and we used to back up to that. So uh, once after, if we need the photos, like we just go to the Google Drive and we, we find a Google Photos option over there. So when we can just scroll and see over the photos and we can download it. It is like the same way we are going to store the code in the Google Cloud storage kind of thing. Like, it's, like I'm just uh, comparing it. So you can just store the code in the cloud kind of thing. And whoever wants the code, they can just uh, like download and they can use it. They can work on the code. <clears throat> and we can also even contribute like uh, contribute to the code. So that is a real time usage. So Git is, an also, uh, Git is an open source software. So it's like, uh, like you don't have to pay for it. Like whoever wants, they can use it. So now like, here, if you see, I have a repository, like Exponent Software repository, like uh, over here. So if you see, this is like a Git uh, repository. So like here, you will be able to see the branch with named as main. So which is the main branch. So I wanted to tell you two things. Now this code is available in the online. So now I will tell you how to connect this code to your local. So uh, now, if you see how I've created a test folder in my local file explorer here, I've created a test folder. So now I'm just, you have to just click on it and you can just type CMD to straight away open this folder in your terminal. And it's not necessary that you even, oh, you can open the terminal and you can use the CD command dot dot. It will go back and CD. And if you give the folder name, it will move the direct, like move the folder, uh, folder. If you wanted to create a new folder, you can just give MKDIR and you can create a new folder and like that will create a new folder. For example, if I create MKDIR uh, test one, so this will create MKDIR new folder. So now CD test one, it will it will move it will re redirect me to that particular folder. So now, like how to create a or how to clone the project from the cloud to your local system? It's very simple. So here you will be seeing a red color button. A blue color sorry green color button so here in this green color code button when you click on this you'll be able to see this options so when you click on this download zip folder this will only download the code it won't connect your github to your local uh, repository so basically this only downloads the code so there is no use because you can download and you can run the code and you can work on this but you won't be able to contribute to online which means that you won't be able to like whatever changes you do in your local you cannot able to push that code to your uh, online online uh, repository so for that purpose there is a https option so you'll be able to see this clone so you just copy this url so once after you copy this URL, you can just go to your terminal and you, you can just choose the folder in which folder you wanted to clone this project exactly to be. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to clone to this test one uh, folder. So git command is git space. You have to give the clone and you have to just copy the URL, whatever you have, uh, cop paste the URL, whatever you have copied from there. So I'm just going to click on enter. So you'll be able to see the option cloning into this particular folder. So can you see this remote cloning is done? So now if you see why it has been cloned into that particular folder is because this repository is being created in this particular folder. So it is creating a folder like FDOCFE hyphen this name. So if you see it is being cloned into this folder. So now if I go and open and see my test folder, so I have cloned inside test one folder. If you could see, you will be able to see this FDOC hyphen FE hyphen three, this folder is being created. Can you see now the this is being exactly cloned? So now like, let me click on the command, let me, and like, 
if you wanted to use any code editors, you can use Visual Studio. So I have used Visual Studio. I have already installed Visual Studio code. So you you can just give code space dot. So what it will do, it will straight away open this particular thing in the Visual Studio code editor. Okay. Just a moment. Uh, yeah. Can you see it is being it is opening uh, the my project whatever I have cloned in Visual Studio Code. So like, if you see here, like uh, you'll be able to see this SS option GitHub client. So if you wanted to clone it with GitHub or like if you wanted to clone it clone with other options, you can use this options as well. Since I am cloning with help of uh, the normal terminal and I'm using Git clone options, I just copied this URL to copy it to my uh, local. So now if you see this, uh, my GitHub is like Visual Studio Code is getting started for that repository. So it is asking like, if you see now this readmb.md file, like that is being available over here. So the best way to find out like, uh, like whether your uh, project is being cloned to your local or not, it's a very simple way. So you'll be able to see this main option below here. Can you see the, the main option below here, which means that your online branch is being connected to here. And also like here I have a sign in to my account. So you wanted to sign into your account as well. If you wanted to contribute your code to the online repository. So here I have already signed in. So I'll also sign out and I will show you. So there will be some error. You will be getting some error. So I also will show you that one as well. So now here I'm just going to create a new file. So test one uh, dot JS file. I'm just creating a new JS file. I'm just putting a simple console dot log half. Hi. Welcome to. Code with prints. So I'm just creating a simple uh, JS file. So now, as soon as you create this file, you if you see here is a Git pre option. So here it will be showing like one particular changes is there, like uh, in your code file. So if you click on this, you'll be able to compare and see what are the changes. So initially there is no such file, and now I have made some changes. So if you wanted to like make this code available in your online GitHub, so what you have to do is. So you have to just click on this plus icon. So the steps is very simple. First, if you make some changes, you have to stage the changes. You have to commit the changes. Then you have to push the code. Very simple. So now you click on the stage the changes plus icon. So it is if you see it, it is available under staged changes. So like after that, you can just type your git commit message like uh, test commit. So, and one more thing, like before you commit, you have to config in uh, config uh, your uh, username and mail. The reason why you want to config the username and mail is be before committing, it needs to know which user commits the message because multiple person might work on the same repository. So which user has committed, the name should be available in the Git repository. For that reason, you have to just config. So I'm just config it, git config. So user dot name. So I'm just giving Prince 1924 as username. And the next one is git config. You have to give the user dot email. I'm just giving my personal mail ID of my GitHub account, like gmail.com. So this now it is config. Okay, it's very simple. You have to just use this to config before committing. So it's not necessary. You have to do it every time for one project folder. You can do it once that's enough. Or if you are configured globally, once you configure that is enough, you don't need to configure every time, but I have not configured it globally. So I'm just configuring it every time for my projects. So now like I'm just clicking on this commit tick symbol. So this will commit your messages. So can you see here below your, you could see one with up arrow. So what does it one with up arrow means one code changes you have committed, but that is not synced to your cloud. So now if you click on the sync changes, what it will do is it will push your code to the cloud. So, but can you see now, like I have signed out. So since I have signed out, it is asking me to authorize because if you don't, if you don't sign in, like this will throw this error message. So you have to authorize and you have to sign in your GitHub to your Visual Studio code. So then only this will allow you to push the code or, uh, okay, I'm just giving continue to authorize the Visual Studio code access to GitHub. So once I click on the continue icon, so you'll be able to see this open. So I, I'm just opening this authorization. So I'm just clicking on this open. So now if you see it is signing into GitHub. So I think this has been signed in. So now if I click on sync changes, so automatically this is going to push my code to the online repository. I think this is done. 
can you see it is done there is no outgoing changes now so if you see now i will refresh this browser and i'll show you so can you see i am able to see now the test1.js file so here can you see test commit this is the message the commit message which i have given so that is going to visible over here so you can like click on this two commits and you can see who has committed can you see prince 1924 committed one minute ago so this is the reason i told that like you should give this uh, commit message and the username you have to configure the username and email because it needs to know which user has committed the uh, code so now let me click on this test commit so can you see it is uh, showing me that console.log of hi welcome with prince this is the changes which are available okay so now i'll do one more thing so same thing i'm just going to show you how to do it in the terminal so instead of doing it in the visual studio code itself i will tell you how to do it in the terminal so now let me do a small change here just i'll just welcome hi okay i'm just giving code with prince alone in the console log so if you see this is a small change which i'm doing can you see here you are able to see the changes okay so now let me click on the stage to change uh, option and now let me uh, like try to do some commit uh, message but i'm not going to commit from github so instead of that i'm just going to show you to in the terminal so you have to give git commit and you have to give hyphen m here you have to give the uh, message okay i'm just going to give test one commit that's a message and you that that's it so you just have to click on the enter can you see now this has been committed so you can commit via terminal as well so if you see now this commit has been done okay so now this if you see one up arrow which shows that one code changes need to be pushed to the uh, like online repository so you have to just click on the sync changes which is going to available in your master okay so very simple if you but simple ways you can commit from here itself you can just completely use the uh, git visual studio code itself it's not necessary that you have to use uh, those changes okay so now if you see uh, let me go to the previous page and i will show you test one commit yeah can you see here test one commit is being done so if you see you will be able to find the difference now so this is the previous version and this is the new version which you, which we have added code with prince it will be showing clearly the each and every difference what code changes has been made so like now consider that someone else has committed to the branch and you wanted to take that uh, code to your local so you can just use this pull so pull is to take the latest code from the online repository and push is to push the code clone is to clone the code from online to remote repository to your local repository and pull push is there okay commit commit is to commit the message and i will show one more option as well so now let me do one thing let me do some small changes high code with friends so now i will create one more file as well so test 2.js so here i'm just going to put console.log of test 2 okay so now here the purpose of the stage option i will tell you so because you, you if you don't give also see like i'm just giving us test commit here so if i don't give the stage the changes also when you click on the stick icon it is going to ask you would you like to stage all your changes and commit them directly if you give yes it will it is going to stay it itself will stay the changes and it will it itself will commit all the changes okay so now like here there is an option called undo last commit if you click on this undo last commit the commit which we are going to do that is going to get committed so i'll tell you why is the reason of the stage changes because consider a scenario you are working on some 10 files but you have to commit only 5 files out of 10 files so what you can do is simply you can unstage the changes and you can stage only the file change which you wanted to commit so when you click on this commit only the files whichever you have staged the changes that only is going to commit not the entire file whichever you are you are working on so that's the reason the stage change option is being used okay so now let me undo the last la, last commit which i have did and there is a arrow icon over here. okay i am going to unstage it so there is an uh, like uh, arrow icon like this if you could see so this is used to discard the changes so if you wanted to discard the changes so whatever changes you are did it will be discarding it if you click on this uh, upper arrow this is like discard all the changes so whichever file changes you are working it will be like discarding all the file changes whichever you, you are working 
if you click on this it is like stage all changes but if you go for specific file and if you wanted to do this you can like click on these arrow which only discusses that particular file so these are some of the like uh, how to use git uh, like it's a basic version so these are some of the git actions so i'll just give you a, like a rough warm up what we have did so like first thing you can just uh, clone it you you can just go through here and you can just click on the code button and you can like copy the url and you can just use git clone option to clone your code to your local and if you wanted to commit you have to use git commit and you can stage the changes and you can commit the changes so once you commit the changes you can sync the changes to the repository so those will be available over here but before doing all these don't forget that you have to config your username and email in the terminal <clears throat> and also you have to just authorize your github uh, like you have to give the authorization to your github if you wanted to uh, like contribute your code to the uh, remote repository of the git so these are some of the basic versions of the git like in the next uh, to, uh, video i'll just give you the advanced version of the git so how to like uh, uh, work with creating a new branches and how to like merge two branches uh, of code so stay tuned and like don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you wanted to watch the all the videos which is coming uh, soon and thanks for watching this video